Well, welcome Elevate. We are so glad you are tuning in with us tonight and we've got such a special treat. Pastor Jeff is joining us. Um, we're gonna be talking about some questions that you've submitted. And so Pastor Jeff, I just wanna say thank you so much for, for being a part. Um, and I know that you have such a heart for the next gen, have a heart for our students. Um, and you don't just say that, but you actually demonstrate it. And so thank you just for, for being here and, and speaking into the students. We're, we're excited to have you. I did my uh, first Instagram live with the students great. last night. It was awesome. I had my hoodie going on, yep. big powerful hoodie. Enjoyed that whole format. We got a lot of responses. So that, that was really a, a cool format to be able to interact with students. And of course I do love the students of our literally our area students yeah. anywhere i just i love young people uh, because they represent potential they represent the future i think that young people today have a unique set of challenges i know it's easy to feel sometimes like you know we we're the only ones with this challenge we're the only ones with this pressure because if it's what you're facing then it feels so real. Right. You, you don't realize everyone has been a young person at some point and they had their own set of challenges. But I do, as, as I've gotten closer to the situation, my own kids being teenagers and having opportunities at my house to sit around with young people and of course interact with you and all the other ones that lead our students, I've realized there's some unique situations, unique challenges, and, and really it's a strategy of the enemy to stop them from what God has planned for yeah. them. And so I thought this would be a cool moment, just yeah. like we were sitting in my house, um, to be able to talk about some of those things. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, before we jump into some of the questions, um, I thought I'd ask you a little bit more lighthearted to get going. Um, you know, fashion and what students wear and stuff is, is a big deal, of course, and maybe having the right brands and all that kind of stuff. And people express themselves differently with that. Uh, but I think we'd all love to kind of learn maybe your lens on fashion. What's kind of, what kind of perspective do you have, you know, as you're wearing your khakis and your, your black polo? And just give us a little insight into, into your mind when, when you think about your fashion. I have, I have no fashion. <laughs> I, I don't even know what fashion is. So this is, this is my uniform. I have about five pairs of khaki pants. Uh, these shoes were given to me. I hear they're cool. I don't know. So they're pretty got, cool. Yeah. Okay. So I got those and then I have actually two of these shirts and big, big men wear dark. Okay, I know black is kind of in fashion, so every yeah, it's good. every youth pastor I see is wearing like black now, yep. which would be great for me if I was a youth pastor, because you never ask a big man if he lost weight, he just got a darker shirt, you know, <laughs> and so that's what I wear. Yeah, um, that's good. Well, thank you so much again for being here, and we have, we've had so many questions coming in from students that we've been asking on our Instagram, hey, ask us questions you've been thinking about. Um, and it's interesting to see some of like the commonalities between the questions. We've been yeah. trying to kind of dissect, okay, so overall, not just isolating one question, but overall, what are some of like the massive things that students are asking? And a lot of it really comes down to pressures. Yeah. Pressures that they're facing from pressures at, at home, maybe at school, with their friends, with thinking about their future, all that kind of stuff. And so I'd, I'd like you to maybe just give some insight to students um, and I think it's so valuable just for students hearing from you, you know, your, your years down the road, but you remember back to your own teenage years as well. Yeah. Maybe give some perspective to students just overall about pressure um, and we can kind of just have a conversation about that. Well, you know, I, I understood this at a different level. Um, I wrote a book called Who Am I? And just the backstory to that book, it's all about identity. And so I think it's really one of the number one issues in, in the life of a person, much less someone who really wants to understand how God created them. Because I, I don't believe you're really fully alive until you understand that you're created by God and for God and that He designed you and He made you. And I know a lot of times for young people, they don't get that affirmation from maybe a parent or you know authority figures in their life so there's this void and they're trying to make sense of life and so there's a struggle there 
And so I wrote this book, Who Am I? Just for, for any person learning, discovering who God created you to be. Yeah. And when you really understand God designed you, God made you, God has a purpose for you, you really start to live. That's when, that's when life begins to, to come alive for you, is when you understand that. Well, in, in writing the book and working on it, we're, we're hitting all these different topics and we're studying all these characters in the Bible. And, and, and it's, it's amazing how the people in the Bible had those questions. I mean, if, if you feel like you're weird, like I'm, I'm struggling with these identity things. Well, study the Bible. I mean, there's all of those characters were asking questions. You know, who am I? David was so honest with, with God. Moses, when God called him at a young age, which is a pattern we see in the Bible too. And what, what we find, what I found was, is there's this struggle for identity and who am I? And even Peter, there's a moment with, with Peter and he's, 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 Jesus asked him the question, who, does, who do people say that I am? And Peter said, you're, you're the Christ, you're, you're the Lord, you're the living, you know, you're, you're the true God, so to speak. He makes that identification, and then Jesus tells him, you're Peter. And when I read that, as we were working through that book, I, I, it was kind of fresh and new for me. Until you know who Jesus is, until you know the person who created you, you don't know who you are. Wow. Well, so what happened was, kind of working through that, I started feeling this burden for young people too, and for homes and for kids. And I, I, I really transparently, I wanted to talk about it, but I, at some level, there was like just a battle about it because I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't know how to say it. I, I didn't want to in any way try to be accentuating some of the pressures that teenagers feel. And, and, and I just, I just wanted to know. So we actually put together something like this where we started having a conversation and at the Keller High School, we opened up the library and I just gathered some students. It, it was just like you and I sitting here. And, and I just said, tell me about your pressures. And they started transparently sharing with me pressures from their home, pressures that they deal with, pressures with the world they live in today because of social media. And, 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 and I, I mean, just a few minutes in, I started getting really emotional. Like I was crying and they were crying. And, and that, that moment really impacted my life. It really did. In fact, I've shared that, uh, just thank you to those students for being transparent because it really impacted me. And I've shared that all over, just yeah. preaching in multiple churches. And every time I share it, like parents are crying teenagers are crying families are because they're there someone is expressing what they feel like they're fighting all by themselves and so I think being a teenager being a student is a difficult period in life it is but I, I just want every student to know that um, I hope you have a fatherly voice in your life that's saying this to you, but I just want to say, it's going to be okay. Yeah. You're, you're going to make it. It's, yeah. it's, you don't have to have it all figured out now. Just keep taking the next step that you have in front of you, and, and it's going to be okay. God has a plan for you. And when you believe that, I can say it to you and say, God has a plan for you. He loves you. He, he, he designed you. He created you. You're, you're made for a purpose. You're going to make a difference. Um, I can say that to you, but when you really sense that God really says that about you and he means it, yeah. it's life-changing. Yeah. It's life-changing. Yeah. I know, Pastor Jeff, you, you had a relationship with God from early on in, in, in your life. Um, maybe speak to, like, what do you see as a real thriving relationship with God? How does that actually impact and play into the pressures that we face? You know, I'll, I'll say I, I did have a relationship with God at an early age, but I will, as, as the same as there's some pressures and challenges in today's generation, I think we have a lot of students in our church that I think they're, <clears throat> they're further along than I was in a lot of ways. Just at the level of understanding they have, the, the equipping that they have. You know, a lot of times you might think, oh, you know, 
this person or that person was further along. I, I really believe we have a generation in terms of, I, did, I didn't understand worship at some level. I didn't, I didn't know a lot about the Holy Spirit. I, I, but I think when it comes to the heart, was I perfect? No. Did I make mistakes? Yes. I mean, every student is kind of finding their way. But I, I think there's, there's students today, they're, I watch them, I see them, I think they're further, they're further along in their understanding of God than, than I was. But I also see that because of some of the things that they have available to them, you know, I mean, our youth group was like, it was not, it was just like a few people and, you know, just, it, it wasn't, it wasn't Elevate, yeah. okay? It wasn't all of these dynamic retreats and all the stuff that they get exposed to. So I, I do see a danger that you can be more around an environment of momentum. You can, you can find, you know, there was only a few people at my youth group. You can come to something like Elevate where there's lots of students and you think because you're hanging around something that has momentum in life and there's lights and all the music and stuff that you really have a relationship with Jesus, but it doesn't work that way, okay? But I wanna be real basic for a minute, okay? Because I wanna to talk to a student who is at a basic level going, where do I find peace? Where do I find hope? How do I deal with anxiety? Well, the first, the first step is you have to have a relationship with Jesus. Okay? Not a relationship with everything in the world is perfect. Not a relationship with I've got all the right degrees or I've got the right job or if I get the right family or if, I'll have, if I had the right friend or if I had the right spouse. And I know it's easy when you're a young person to think, well, he's saying that, you know, like when I get there, it'll be different. I mean, trust me, your, your spouse, I have, I'm, I'm married the love of my life, she's a phenomenal woman, she's a phenomenal mother, she, she, is, she is the one God created for me and the Bible says you become one and yet she can't, she can't fulfill every need in my heart, there's no way, okay? So at the end of the day, the most basic level, Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary, all who are burdened, I will give you rest for your souls. I'm the one that gives you the rest. And Jesus is saying that in a time where there's a lot of unpredictable stuff. I mean, I think we read the Bible and think, were they like floating on a cloud in heaven when Jesus wrote this? No, I mean, they were, they were struggling for food, substance. I mean, there was, there was political upheaval. The, the Romans were taking over their culture. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff going on. And Jesus in the middle of that says, come to me. So the first thing I would say to a student is not have you been to church, not have you enjoyed a retreat or a special worship service. Have you invited Jesus into your life? When, when you say, Jesus, I want you, he says, come to me. Now we can't save ourselves, but we can come. And if you, if you turn slightly in Jesus' direction, he'll come yeah. right there in your room where you feel all alone. He'll come right there, boom. It doesn't have to be a special service. It doesn't have to be the right music. He'll come. And what happens in that moment when we bring all of our sin, all of our brokenness, all of our pain, all of our fears, everything about who we are, that can't meet the standard. See, we can't, we can't earn our way to heaven. We can't do enough good things to be made right with God. God is perfect, he's holy. I know some students may say, he seems so far away, he seems so distant. It seems like I want that peace, but I don't know how to connect with them. Well, that's why Jesus says, look, come to me. I'm the one who completed what you're trying to complete, finish the work. I'm, I, I made the perfect sacrifice. Jesus, Jesus lived on this earth perfectly, yeah. okay? So the life we're looking for, he, he lived it already. And if he, we'll allow him to come into our life, he'll live through us and in us. Like we, we can't do it.
And so I want to make that even more practical. When you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. When you say, Jesus, I want to make you Lord of my life. Uh, all these things can't, they, they, I, it can't happen out here. I make you Lord of my life. The Bible says that you get this gift called repentance and your heart changes. Your heart changes. At the end of the day, you're going to do what you want to do. And so we had questions I know from students. How do you live holy? How do you live pure? How do you live through peer pressure? Well, nothing on the outside is going to make that change. It's, it's when Jesus changes you. It's when you say, and I'm not talking about playing games like Christianese. When you say, Jesus, here's my life. You surrender it to him. He changes you. And then that doesn't mean you don't struggle or you're perfect. But I will tell you this, your heart changes, your inside changes. And then now there's within you this person, Jesus, who's real, who's living, who starts changing your motivations, who starts changing your desires. And, and, and I found this in my own kid's life. Um, I know it's true in my life. Thank God for people like you, Jesse, who preach to young people. Thank you for services. We, we want to learn about God. We learn together. We grow. But nothing replaces you hearing the voice of God yourself. There's, 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 you, you have to right there. And so I would say practically, one, surrender your life to Jesus. Tell somebody. Hey, I, I prayed, I received. Go to Romans 10, 9 in the Bible. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. When you confess him as the Lord of your life, the most high thing, and you mean it, you don't have to question whether or not he comes in. He comes in, he changes you. If you've prayed that prayer and you've been off and you're struggling, all you have to do is come. Come back to him. Jesus, here I am. I'm totally surrendered. Again, tell someone so they can start helping you with your journey. But the, the practical side of that is sit down with your journal and tell Jesus about what you're, what you're stressed about, what you're anxious about. I'm, I'm being real practical here for a minute. Just sit and write down. Here's what I'm worried about. Here's what I'm concerned about. And then here's something we don't do a lot of times. Just listen. Let him speak to you, you know, let, let his word speak to you and start replacing what you're afraid about, what you're worried about with a real relationship with yeah. Jesus. And I, and I want you to know, I want to say this, because I, I feel this strongly from the Holy Spirit. Some of you are going to start a whole new pattern. I, I, that's what's so powerful about this. Never underestimate one person in a sincere relationship with Jesus, when you do that over and over and he speaks to you and he grows you and he develops you, you can literally set a pattern that changes generations. Yeah. Yeah. I think about my mom, you know, she, she grew up in a home, her, 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 her father was an alcoholic, she, he was gone a lot and she just, she walked to a little church that was just up the road and got saved at a vacation Bible school. And there wasn't a lot of the resources that we have today. There wasn't videos of youth pastors teaching the Bible. But she learned how in that private place to learn how to spend time with God, learn how to pray. She was praying for her husband. She was praying for her children. She, she prayed me into the kingdom. She, 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 she started building that, that, that secret place, private place with God. And so where I am today started with a little girl in the middle of East Texas who got genuinely saved when there was no support around her. She would go to church by herself. And, she, and, and my, my father, a lot of people don't know this, but when I was younger, my father was saved, but he had been hurt by the church. And he was a good man, a man of integrity. But he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't into all of this. I mean, it's funny what I do today. He wasn't really into it because yep. he just didn't get it, you know. And my mom took me to church. She and I would go to church. We, 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 I loved church from the first time I ever went. And so I, I'm saying this to somebody out there. You're not alone if you have Jesus. And it's hard. That's why we walk by faith, the Bible says. 
Faith is confidence in what Jesus has said over what we see around us. We walk by faith, not by sight. And if, we'll, if you begin that process, it's life-changing. And you can set a whole new pattern for your family. I think that's so good what you're saying because I know that there are a lot of students watching who they are in the middle of setting a, a new trend for their family and just that encouragement that it's going to be okay, yes. we're going to make it. Yes. Um, but I, I also think it's so good on the level of we're in a time right now when we're not meeting for we don't really even know how right. long until we're going to meet together in person. So we're all being faced with this this question of, you know, do I really have substance in my relationship with God? Right. Have I just been right. gleaning off of the energy and momentum of an environment or being around certain people? Um, but what an opportunity that, that we have now to really to take an inventory of where we're at in our relationship with Jesus. And that's yeah. so huge. So Pastor Jeff, let's make it even more practical. I know a lot of the pressures that students face as I've talked to them over the years and we've gotten questions is about pressure to perform from parents, teachers, you know, even just comparing themselves to each other thinking, you know, so-and-so got this offer. Am I going to get as good an offer? So-and-so got into this school, you know, all those type of pressures to perform. What would you say to the student that's, that's facing those pressures? Well, the first thing I would say is that's not something that just students face. Yeah. People face that. We all face that. The Bible says, they that compare themselves among themselves and measure themselves by themselves are not wise, okay? So what does that mean? Wisdom is applying God's truth in real life. So the fact is, it's a game you can't win, okay? Comparison is a game that you never win, all right? And so I know in my, myself, I mean, even as we started Milestone Church and you're just like, we should be further by now. Or it's all, it seems like in my life, God's always made me take the slower, more challenging road in a lot of ways. At least that's how it's felt to me. Yeah. You know, some may look at you and say, man, you, you know, you've seen all this happen and, and you, you lived it. So, you know, look, this was not overnight. Right? You know all of what it took along the way. So what I would say is run your own race. I know for students, again, this can sound cliche, it can just sound like words, you know, but I hope they'll believe it. Yeah. You know, I've been a teenager, I've been a college student, I've been there, and when it's your, when it's your battle, you feel like you're the only one, right? And you're like, you don't understand. You know, this, this situation is gonna cause this situation, it's gonna cause this situation. And what I've learned in life is, God's the one who's directing our steps. And I know that's hard to believe sometimes. It's like, well, okay, that's easy for you to say, but it's true. If you, if you fully surrender, God's, His eyes are searching to and fro throughout the whole earth for those that are willing, if we're willing to submit our lives to Him and really put our destiny in His hands, He wants to show Himself faithful. And he's, he, he uses people who are just willing yeah. to say, here I am. And that's the story of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Not always the most talented, not the people who got the best offers. Yeah. If you really read the Bible, it's many times the least likely person, even people who had made mistakes, but when, when they have their heart turned toward God and surrendered and they're willing to be faithful with the little. So let me get real practical for a minute. The way you get out of the comparison game and the stress about what everybody else is doing, first of all, you have to believe God has a plan for you. When you believe, okay, He created me, the Bible says we are created by Him four good works that he prepared before we were ever born. No matter what anybody around you says, you're not a mistake. You're designed by God, you're planned by God, and he put gifts inside of you. And I would say discover what those gifts are and begin to develop them, begin to use them. You'll, you'll find people will see in you things that you're strong at around you. You'll find fulfillment when you use those gifts. You also you also begin to recognize they're outside of you. Because yeah. when you're using your gift, you're like, wow, this is outside of me. And so I, I would say be faithful in the little. 
And if you'll be faithful in the little, the Bible says he, he gives more in those places. So be faithful. I, I think a couple other things. Enjoy today. You know, if you're always looking to tomorrow, then you're, you're not enjoying today. And I know it may seem crazy to some of these students because there are challenges to high school and there are challenges to junior high, but there'll be a day where you look back and go, man, I wish I could go back to that time in my life. So, so enjoy it today. You know, I've, I've got a phrase that I use a lot with our team. We're living it now. Yeah. You know, like we're living it now. There's so much good about now. And sure, we're thinking about the vision that God has for the future for us, but we're living it now. And you, you begin to enjoy life. The other phrase that I, I started coming up with as a young pastor, okay? So when I was a young pastor, there wasn't social media. You know, I was in a furniture store somewhere, or phone company starting churches, just pastoring people. You know, back then you didn't follow every famous cool dressing preacher on the planet. You just like got your Bible, read it every day, pastored people, preached the word, and you weren't overly worried about what was cool or trendy. You know, you just, you just were faithful with the people God had given you. And I, I began to, to just think about this. This is just a thought. We have nothing to prove and no one to impress. When, when you settle in your soul, I have nothing to prove and no one to impress, then, then God's favor starts resting on your life yeah. because you're living to be faithful with what he's called you to and what he's given you. And I wanna make a promise to every student. If you'll get your heart before the Lord in a right place, you'll be faithful. You'll find great mentors and people around you. And, and people say, where do you find those? Teachable people and people that are hungry always find people that wanna help them. You'll grow in wisdom. You'll love God. God will open doors in your life that no one can shut. He's going to open those doors. It's, it's going, I don't know. You, you can believe it or not believe it, but take it from me. It's going to happen. God's going to have the right spouse for you. God's going to have the right job for you. He's going to have the right plan for you. Am I promising you you're never going to have struggles? No. There's gonna be challenges in this world. Jesus said we'll have tribulation, yeah. but he's gonna carry you through. And you'll look back on your life and you'll realize, you know what? God's been way more faithful to me than I've even understood. Yeah. And you'll just keep taking steps along the way and he'll lead you to your destiny. And I just want every student to know I'm cheering them on. Yeah. I mean, I believe in this generation and I truly believe this. You know, we say it, pastors, you know, this generation will do great things. I believe this generation is going to carry the things of God further and do more amazing things than what we've seen. I think it's going to pale in comparison. We started Milestone Church with a vision for spiritual family and a vision to really see sons and daughters go further. And that's always been one of the things we continue to preach about. Yeah. And, and these students watching this in this format. And I'm thankful, you know, you always find something to be thankful for. Yeah. I'm an extrovert, so I don't like being cooped up in the house under shelter orders. Um, so I don't like that. I don't like the fact that we can't have church. I don't like the fact that I've had to come up with a whole way to reorganize our church. I had to literally go through our entire financial plans and reorganize and have conference calls and you know, figure out how to get yeah. Zoom going. I don't like any of that. But I tell you one thing that's good out of this is this has given me a chance to connect with our students in a yeah. different way. And we're grateful. And so this is, there's a lot of, if we always look for it, there's always things that God, even in the midst of certain things, and there's students out there that are facing things they may not have chosen, but always understand this. God, God is not an author of evil or confusion, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But if we'll look to God in all things, we don't, we don't thank him for all things, but in things that we're going through, he's always got something that he's showing us and he's teaching us and growing us in. It's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Jeff, just for being here and speaking truth into, into our students. Um, I, I want to ask you just to maybe just pray for students. Yeah. You know, one thing we've been saying a lot just in these live stream services is like God's presence isn't 
limited to a building yeah. or a location. And so I believe even just through praying for students with the pressures that they're facing, that the Holy Spirit can minister to them in this moment, in the living room, in the bedroom, wherever they're watching. So would you, just, would you just pray for our students? Absolutely. I want to pray for each one of you. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for three things right now. And the first thing I'm going to pray is that every student listening would experience God's presence right now. Lord, we know that you love us, that you love every student listening. They could be experiencing some of the greatest times in their life. They could be in a good place. They could be dealing with condemnation over sin. They may during this time have looked at some things they shouldn't have. They may have, have, they, they may have, have, have gone down the wrong path or they may be doing great. They, they may be at, at the pinnacle of everything in life that they've ever wanted. All of us need your presence. So Lord, we let you right now tell us, you made us, you designed us, you loved us, you love us now. And Jesus, we ask you right now to come in your, just the way you uniquely know us to speak to every student. I pray, Lord, it wouldn't just be a feeling that they would know deep down inside that you're there with them. Second of all, Lord, I pray for a student who knows they're not right with you. They're not fully surrendered to you. They've never said, Jesus, take my life. And I pray for that student right now that right where they are, this could be a turning moment in their life. It could change their entire future by just surrendering and saying, Jesus, here's my life. I know you died on the cross for me. You rose from the dead. You're alive today, Jesus. Come into my life and save me. I surrender myself to you. If you prayed that prayer, I'm gonna ask you to let us know in the live stream chat. Reach out to Pastor Jesse, Luke, all these youth leaders that, that work, Kamala or any, any of them, Liz, any, anybody within the, the youth connection area, Lord, I, I pray, Lord, that, that they would reach out. They'd let us know, because we have some ways for you as a student, Lord, that, that you could, uh, we, we have some ways for you that the Lord wants to help you take next steps. And so if you'll just reach out, we'll help you take those steps. The, the, the third thing I want to pray for is, Lord, our, our, our parents, most of the time parents, they, they, they are concerned for, for us as students a lot of times. And they're just they, they want us to be healthy and whole and alive. And, 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 and people, Lord, are, are looking at us as, as students. And out there right now, there's students listening where they feel pressure. Or they, they, they're dealing with the stress or anxiety. Lord, I pray right now, not by my voice, but by your voice, you would show every student you have created them with purpose. You have designed them. You made them the way they are. What they think maybe is a quirk is your design. Lord, I pray against stress, anxiety. I pray against insecurities, fears, loneliness. Lord, I pray right now that you would go beyond my words and you would mark these students to know, Lord, that you have fashioned them, made them, and created them, and that you love them, and it's going to be okay. You have a plan and a purpose for their life and you're ordering their steps to lead them to that purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. I love all of you.